What is up, guys? Ultra Balls back with another SPL game. Uh, today we have a, one of the first Week 4 games, and it's an OU game between Corey2600 and Black Oblivion. Uh, look at the teams quickly. It's almost a mirror match, right? So, Corey has um, his patented core of Mew and Amoongus, which he uses, all, like, all the time. He's also Steelless again. I can't get... Corey, start using Steel types, dude. Like, people will keep bringing Lele on your ass. Like, non-choice Lele just rails him. It does every single week. Uh, yeah, Corey, you gotta start bringing some steals, my man. Uh, yeah, Corey's a cool guy, though, so I can't hate on him too much. But, uh, yeah, they both have, like, four of the same mons. The only difference is being the water types. Like, Black Oblivion has a Caldeo, and Corey has a Gyarados. And then Corey has, um, they both have different fat grasses. And I like Black Oblivion's better because it's a steel type. So, <laughs> that's what I have to say about this. I guess looking at, like, what the sets could possibly be... Um, I would assume both Landos are offensive, either Scarf or Z-Move. The reason I say that is because both, uh, both, um, Corey and Black Oblivion have Muse that could deal with Zygarde. Uh, so I guess they could afford to run, like, a more offensive Lando. I've been using, like, Fly Z Lando again. It's, like, stupid good. Like, if you guys haven't used that set in a while, try and make a team, make a team with it. It's, yeah, it, it like, offensive Lando, like, Z-Move, I mean, pretty much gets kills whenever it comes in, um, like, with the way the current metagame is. Especially, yeah, it, like, Smackdown or Gravity, because uh, Zapdos are all running, like, really fat spreads for Kartana. So you could run, like, Gravity or Smackdown Lando, and you just get, get kill everything with Z-Fly and Earthquake. So, yeah, that's what I have to say about that. But we see the lead off, so uh, Black Oblivion's terrain goes up first, which doesn't really tell much to us, but it will alert the players a little bit. So, like, for example, if Cory's Lele Scarf, then he also knows that Black Oblivion's is Scarf, because, uh, like, his terrain went up first. And similarly, like, if uh, Black Oblivion is not Scarf Lele, then he knows Corey's also not Scarf. So, like, we don't know anything, but the players did get some knowledge from this. At least one of them did. Uh, we see Moonblast come out to 50. That's Scarf damage or, like, Z-Move or something. It's, it's not Specs. But Corey's is some sort of boosting item because that did a shit ton. Wow. 62. So that's either, like... It could be, I don't, it seems a little low for specs. It could be like a mind plate or a twisted spoon sort of thing. Unless maybe I have my Kelks wrong. I guess it could be specs too, but I, I don't think so. But that does more than what Scarf damage does. I know that for sure. Um, so yeah, Core is some sort of boosting item on that. And then, uh, so now if if Black Oblivion is Scarf, he'll probably just stay in and click Moonblast again. If he's not, he doesn't want to risk a speed tie. Yeah, which is why he goes Pharaoh. Uh, Corey goes to Mew to eat up the, uh, the Moonblast. I think he's assuming, maybe he's assuming the, the Lele Scarf, or, well, I mean, the Lele, like, Black Oblivion's Lele was, like, this Mew could eat up Lele Moonblast anyway, I guess, so it should be fine. Like, this play was fine for Corey. I like Black Oblivion's play, too, not risking potential speed ties. So we see the Wisp come out, as I assume a spike goes up. Yeah, but now Mew might defog if it has it. Uh, so either Mew's Defog and Lando's Rocks, or it's the opposite. Um, yeah, I assumed, I was just going to say, I assume it's this way, because I'm pretty sure Corey's Lando is Defog, and um, I don't, Scarf Rocks Lando isn't that great. Scarf Defog is, like, passable for hazard removal, so I think, yeah, it's definitely Scarf Lando on Corey's side. I feel pretty comfortable about that. Um, we see a knockoff come off on the Ferrothorn. But now the Pharaoh could honestly just stay in and click Leech Seed, I think. I think that's a fine play. Um, nothing really wants to come in on Leech. And, like, if, if Corey, like, wants to go... Like, Corey's going to have a really hard time keeping Spikes off this game because whenever he goes out to Lando to Defog, Black Oblivion could just Leech him and then Spike again because he's going to be locked into Defog. So I feel like Spikes will always be up for Black Oblivion. And that's going to be really nice. Uh, so Corey goes into Lele on the knockoff. It was Twisted Spoon, yeah, so I got that right. But, like, let's be honest, who doesn't use the plates? Like, those are a hundred times better anyway, so... But yeah, Black Oblivion won't want to stay in here and take an HP fire, so he's most likely going to go into... I think the Mew? I think, like, yeah, it, anything other than Mew's too risky. You don't want to risk him, like, going for Moonblast or Moonblast or Psychic on another switch. Like, for example, like, going Calvio on HP fire... Like, there's no reason for him to make that play when he could always just go Mew. And even if he did Moonblast, I'm pretty sure Mew, um would be able to eat that, like, relatively well, because it's not Specs Lele, it's, like, yeah. And now the the Spoon was knocked off anyway, but like I said, that's not going to affect the his Moon Blast regardless. But, yeah, so Mew is a perfectly fine switch here. Uh, I think Black Oblivion could probably soft-boiled here in case Lele wants to Moon Blast, so he could keep this as healthy as possible. 
Uh, and then when the Mew gets back up to full, then Black Oblivion could just Wisp the Lele and then spam Recover until it dies, I think would be the play. Yeah, so he does Roost here, so now he should probably just Wisp, because if Lele wants to stay in, he could just Soft Boiled Spam. So Cory does go Amoongus here, uh, and unfortunately Black Oblivion misses the Wisp. Um, I mean, like, Wisping Amoongus isn't, like, that game-changing of a thing, but it's always nice to cancel out those that Black Sludge. So he does get the Wisp off now. Taunt Mew, what the f is this like Ores? Ores stall breaking set? It's gonna be like knockoff, knockoff uh, taunt. Wisp recover? No, that set's so dog shit. I hope that it's not that. Uh, so we go out into the Titar. Who are we trying to catch here? Uh, Mew goes into Lele. Or um, Lele. Mew. I just said Mew goes into Lele. Cory goes into Mew. Damn, it's it's already it's getting too late for me out here. Okay, Cory goes into Mew. But I don't think Black Oblivion's gonna want to stay in and just like let this get wisped. So, so he should he should honestly just go back to Pharaoh, because Mew can't do anything to Pharaoh, and then uh, Black Oblivion could just leech up and spike up and whatever. So I'm pretty sure here I would just leech seed to be honest, because Mew's probably gonna soft boiled. Uh, you could either get, no, you could get up a spike on soft boiled and then leech the next turn. Yeah, and now I would just leech here. I don't think there's any reason to switch out your Pharaoh Thorn. Nothing even beats this, so I would just I'd leech, but he just goes Mew. On the Earthquake, yeah, I, that's what I don't get. I would have just leeched if I was Black Oblivion. But either way, well, no, I guess this is fine because it gives him an opportunity to get the Mew healthy. Uh, as Cory goes into Tyranitar, now Black Oblivion will probably throw out a Wisp, I would assume. No, he switches out to Keldeo, uh, and that Crunch did nothing. <laughs> okay, so Cory, I think Cory is Scarf Tar. It has to be. Uh, and we catch the Lele double with Amoongus. So that was a, or we catch the Amoongus double with Lele, I should say. But Black Oblivion, that was a really nice play, not staying in to Wisp the Tar. The thing is, if it was Banditar, you didn't want to stay on, in on a Crunch anyway, because it still does a lot. Um, and Cory wouldn't pursuit there because he was going to expect a Wisp. So he was always crunching. So that's why going Keldeo was a great play. And it did nothing. So yeah, it was probably Specs. And then Amoongus is just left out for dead. Um, this is why I don't like... Yeah, I was going to say, this is why I don't like, um... Like, Cory's builds where he uses no steel type. I, it just puts you in some terrible positions. So, he Psy Shocks. Uh, I'm pretty sure Black Oblivion is not Scarf Lele. I think what Cory thought was like, Oh, Black Oblivion's Lele Scarf, so he's got to click Moonblast, but... Why would you risk that? Like, there's nothing that Black Oblivion did that showed that he was, like, Scarf yet. You know what I mean? And then Garrett gets cooked with a crush. Holy shit. See what I mean? Offensive Landos are slept on as hell right now. People do not expect this shit. Like, Black Oblivion's Keldeo is definitely Scarf. And I think Cory thought the Lele was Scarf, and then he thought the Lando was Scarf. But neither of them were Scarf. It was the... It's the Keldeo. Like, I'm positive about it. So, yeah, he loses two months quick, and I don't think Cory could win anymore. Um, I guess Black Oblivion... Like, I wouldn't say Cory... Like, I don't agree. Like, getting lured by Conk Crush, that's, a, that's not, like... I, that shit will happen because it's not very common. But staying in with Amoongus was definitely a misplay. And I, I don't blame Cory as much for the Gyarados play just because, like, yeah, like I said, offensive Landos, like, are, like, Z move, I mean, like, breaker Landos are very rare at the moment, especially in Tor play. Just because Scarf and Defensive just give you so much utility. So we knock off the Mew. Now Black Oblivion should just Leech Seed again on Mew's Recover or Spike again. He does Leech Seed, and now Mew's forced to recover so he could get up his third spike, and then I would just Leech again. And I don't think Cory has a way to beat the... I don't think Cory has a way to beat this Ferrothorn yet anymore. Um, I still don't know that if that Garrow was Z-move or if it was Mega. Uh, we're not sure about that, but either way, like, I guess Z-move, Garrow could have been a bit more of an issue, but uh, if it was Mega, it was walled by the Pharaoh anyway. Um, I actually... That's the first play that Black Oblivion made that I really don't agree with. Because this Landorus was obviously Scarf, he should have just spiked again. Because if the Landorus locks into Defog, he's forced out anyway. And, like, now you knocked off the Lando, so... I don't know. I felt like if you if you let the Lando keep its Scarf on, you never had to switch the Pharaoh out. <laughs> Until it locked into Earthquake, which gives you a free switch into your own Lando, which then, like, gets a kill. You know what I mean? I, I feel like... Yeah, I don't think he needed to knock off the Lando there. I, th I feel like he could have just uh, spiked again on the Defog and then Leech Seeded. But it's whatever. Uh, I mean, he's so far ahead of this game. So now the Lele goes for Moonblast um, as the Pharaoh clicks Power Whip. Doesn't kill because he's double Intimidated. Uh, it doesn't matter, though, because um, 
Yeah, now he got the damage off he needed to just to kill this to sand. And he doesn't need the the um, he doesn't need the Tyranitar anymore. Because I'm pretty sure that Keldeo wins now for sure. Doubles into Landorus on the Landorus U-turn, and now Cory will have to go into Mew, but like Mew can't do anything to like yeah, I, this is game over because Black Oblivion just goes into Pharaoh again and he can spam Leech Seed. And like the Mew c keeps going for Wisp because that's the only thing it has to touch Landers because it's not Ice Beam, it's Rocks Earthquake. So that means that uh, Black Oblivion could just keep spamming. Or every time the Mew comes out, he gets a free switch into Pharaoh to either get up Spikes or Leech Seed or whatever. And his Lando is almost dead. Um, I think, yeah, what is Cory's Lando at? But yeah, every time it comes in, it has to take, like, Leech Seed damage and a Power Whip and whatever. Yeah, see, it's at 34, so... Oh, Black Oblivion speeds up the process, doubling to Kel. That, and, yeah, and then Cory forfeits, because Keldeo got a kill there, and then it was game over. But, um... Yeah, I, Cory's whole team was kind of walled by Ferrothorn, outside of the Lele, which Black Oblivion never really had to risk, like, staying in. He did risk it one play, but at that point, the game was over anyway. Um, yeah... Well, we'll look at the, the the score here. So this was the first game of the week between the Classics and the Runers. So uh, Black Oblivion puts the Classics up 1-0. Uh, look, at, I just I'm not a fan of like Corey bring Corey's a really good player, but he brings the like similar teams a lot, and I think that makes him easy to like easier to prep against. So. But yeah, like I said, Corey's a great player, so he'll bounce back. I just would say to him in the future, try and like. Um, Switch up your building style a little bit. Make sure you throw at least one steal on your team, please, next time. <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah, that like Corey, like I said, really good player. I just think that the team this week wasn't very great. It was really similar to what he brought last week. So um, it makes like prepping pretty easy. So I guess, yeah, and Black Oblivion played really good, though. I mean, he played super solid, and he never really gave Corey an opening. Uh, he capitalized on some cool sets like Roxy Lando. Uh, took that one pretty convincingly. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, Ultra Balls out. Peace.